Hello, this is Mark Wildman of Wildman Athletica, and today we are going to talk about the double kettlebell suitcase deadlift. Deadlifting is a fundamental human action, and you should be very, very good at it. There are a bunch of ways to practice deadlifts. The most common way is with a barbell, where you put on a lot of weight, and you do sets of one to, say, five. Pure strength training. The problem with barbell deadlifting is it tends to be fairly expensive and it's very hard for people to do if you live in an apartment on the second or third floor. You have to have a barbell, which costs $400. You have to drag 400 pounds of plates upstairs, which probably cost $700. Now, if you were to drop it, it could go through the floor because most places are not rated for that much load per square inch. The kettlebell deadlift is a fairly decent alternative to the barbell deadlift. In order to get the most out of something like dumbbell or kettlebell deadlifts, you take the numbers up. You say maybe do three to five to start, but then the numbers go up or the sets go up. Oftentimes, first the sets go up, go from five sets of five to six sets of five, seven sets of five, eight sets of five, nine sets of five, build up to say 20 sets of five. So your total volume being say 100 reps and then collapse that down until you get to say five sets of 20. The great thing about kettlebells is that they are designed to be lifted for long periods of time. So you can take a suitcase deadlift and add it to a bunch of other movements like double cleans, double snatches, clean and press, front squats, and you can get an infinite number of exercises and an infinite number of workouts out of them. That is a little bit harder to do with dumbbells, but you can do it. With the kettlebell deadlift, we would like to point our feet generally straight ahead so that our toes don't get underneath the bells when we set them down. There is no need for turnout with this. Step up to your kettlebell, put your feet directly under the line of your shoulders. Two hands, reach down to activate the lat. Get down, grab weight with both hands, stand all the way up. The important part is that we are driving our knees back to straighten our legs at the top, tucking our tailbone and squeezing our glutes. As with every deadlift, the goal is to squeeze your glutes to protect your spine. Touch down, stand all the way up, lock out, touch down, stand all the way up, lock out, roll your shoulder blades back just a little bit so that you can feel your lats engage. If you're not feeling your lats engage, squeeze your shoulder blades back further, but do not lift your rib cage. Keep the rib cage down at the same time to help you keep your core tight. Touch down, stand, lock out, touch down, stand. Take that one 1,000 count at the top to squeeze your glutes. When you're done, set the kettlebells all the way down. Things that people may do wrong in the beginning. Oftentimes when people come from something like heavy barbell training, they turn out a lot. The problem with that is, is that they'll end up setting kettlebells down on their toes. We do not need to turn out with this exercise because this is a medium weight deadlift. Point the feet straight ahead. Knees stay over feet the entire time. If the ankles are rolling in and the knees are coming together, we also consider that to be not great. Drive the knees out so that they end up over the feet, squeeze the lats back and together, stand all the way up. At the top, the most important part is squeezing the glutes. Second most important part is straight legs. Third most important part is driving the rib cage down. This is a very, very simple exercise, but deadlifting is important. You should learn it with barbells. You should learn it with dumbbells. You should learn it with kettlebells. You should learn it with sandbags. Eventually things like this build into things like farmer's carries. Picking things up and setting things down without getting hurt is incredibly important to your longevity and to the longevity of your work life. Ladies probably will start this with an 8K in each hand and they will go to double 10s, double 12s. Getting up to a 12 in each hand is about 50 pounds. And if you were to do say five sets of 20, it's still a pretty serious workout, even though it's not a barbell. Gentlemen will probably use in the range of 16 kilograms to start, 24 kilograms average, and stronger guys will probably use 32K in each hand. Often people will do this with offset weights. A lot of old kettlebells are just fixed weights before the adjustable competition bells became available. 
competition adjustable bells like the Wildman bell can be adjusted in half K increments so you can control this very precisely. But a lot of people don't have that. If you go to gyms, they tend to have kettlebells from 10 years ago when kettlebells became popular and they have fixed weights. So you can do this with asymmetric weights, say a 20K in one hand, a 24K in the other hand. Just make sure that you flip the weights to the other side for half your number of sets. I tend to alternate every round. So it'd be light, heavy, and then heavy, light, and then light, heavy, and just flip back and forth. I accomplish that by simply turning around and facing the other direction so that I don't have to move the bells back and forth all the time. Asymmetrical training is absolutely fine, but the idea with any deadlift is to get really good at standing all the way up. That is the most important part.